Good evening and welcome to the midweek edition of the State of Business. I'm Nishani Figuera. First, let's take a look at tonight's main stories. Delegates of Russian State Atomic Energy Corporation meets President Sirisena. Government targets a turnover of 4.4 billion US dollars in the rubber industry by 2025. In tonight's main story, the delegates of the Russian State Atomic Energy Corporation called on President Maitri Palasirisena at the official residence of the President today. The five-member delegation, including its Deputy Chief Executive of the Russian State Atomic Energy Corporation for International Relations, Nikolai Spassky, participated in this meeting. The delegation arrived in the country with the aim of granting scholarships to uplift the science, technology and research streams in Sri Lanka, as well as to strengthen cooperation between the two countries in the power and energy, industrial and agricultural sectors. Further discussions were made on implementing long and short term projects in cooperation with the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy and the Ministry of Higher Education and Highways. Minister Susil Premajanta and Yuri Materi, Ambassador of the Russian Federation to Sri Lanka and Maldives were also present on this occasion. State Minister of Finance Iran Vikramaratna stated that the government's target is to achieve an annual industry gross turnover of 4.4 billion US dollars in the rubber industry by 2025. Speaking further, the State Minister also noted that Sri Lanka's position has fallen in the world's natural rubber industry index, requiring strategic plans to regain the loss. The State Minister made these statements while addressing the annual general meeting of the Association of Manufacturers and Exporters of Rubber Products, which was held in Colombo last evening. The Ministry of Plantation Industries collaboration with various stakeholders to work out the Sri Lanka Rubber Industry Master Plan for the period 2017 to 26 required allocation in our budget of 2018 and the Minister of Finance has provided for it. This industry has a great untapped potential. We have a long way to go in reaching that potential. I am happy that our government is determined to make this happen. We are committed to strengthen the industry by providing critical industry infrastructure, both soft and hardware, that the private sector demands. We endeavor to create an enabling environment, conducive for growth, that means the challenges due to supply side disruptions on one hand and all sorts of other issues that we inherited before we took office in 2015. We are just about to have an agri-rubber tire production uh, center in this country. Manufacturing of value-added products based on raw rubber commenced as far back as the 40s as we heard. And it took us a long time to shift such outstanding level of rubber product manufacturing. I'm sure that we are now moving in the right direction. The opening ceremony and the press conference of the Lanka Rubber Global Consortium Private Limited was held in Colombo this morning under the patronage of Chairperson of the Export Development Board Indira Malvata. National target for our country is that we should reach over 20 billion US dollars by 2020. And in fact, uh, we have looked at some of the targets and looking at it, I think most of the sectors are very confident that they can achieve much more than what they have done and we can definitely achieve over the US 20 billion and in fact this year our target for the for exports was something like uh, 13 million but we will reach a 15 million uh, as per the provincial data that we have received so all argues well and I think we are looking at it positively and now let's take a look at a few cabinet decisions in brief the Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal to sign a Memorandum of Understanding on Agricultural Cooperation between Sri Lanka and Turkey. A decision was made to sign a trilateral agreement with China and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization to obtain technical cooperation for increasing production, to improve value chains and increase commercialization of main fruits in Sri Lanka under the assistance of China. The proposal to sign an agreement to host the 18th Summit of Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora in Sri Lanka from the 22nd of May to the 3rd of June 2019 was also approved by the Cabinet. The Cabinet has already approved the establishment of a special High Court for accelerating the proceedings of legal action 
related to bribery and corruption allegations and allegations regarding complex financial crimes. A bill has been prepared by the legal draftsman for amending the Judicature Act No. 2 of 1978. Time for us to take a short break. Do stay with us for more news when we come back. Welcome back. You're watching The State of Business. The Japanese government has agreed to provide a grant of 120 million rupees to the Sri Pali campus of the Colombo University to establish an audiovisual studio as a platform to develop digital systems within the country. The fund will be provided under the grants assistances for grassroots projects. The grant contract was signed between the Japanese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Kenichi Sugunuma, and the vice chancellor of the University of Colombo, Professor Lakshman Disanayaka, in Colombo today. We are a university, so everybody expects us to create new knowledge. Create new knowledge. That's our mandate. So you can't create new knowledge without having quality staff, as I mentioned to you earlier, and also the facilities around you. Okay, you can conceptualize, you can theorize, that's the training given to us. That is how we differ from other people, other professions. But at the same time, in order to create new knowledge, you need an environment that can actually help you to create that new knowledge. So we believe this project given to us by the Japanese embassy will help Sri Pali to go in that endeavor. I sincerely expect that. We will be using the equipment given to us to the maximum potential. Meanwhile, the Japanese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Kenichi Sugunuma, highlighted Japan's involvement in supporting development and promoting digitalization and cultural exchange between both countries. We have many collaborations. There are many joint researches, study, exchange of students between the universities of Colombo and Japanese universities and other institutions. But we are also trying to promote cooperation, not only in studies, but cooperation and collaboration in the mass media area transfer of the TV broadcasting system, uh, the digitalization by the government by adopting the Japanese digital transmission system soon. So there will be a lot of needs for engineers and studio um, staffs familiar with digital system <coughs> and also the Japanese broadcasting standard. We are also trying to promote collaboration in, in the content of the media. We are working to promote exchange between reporters, journalists, media persons. We are also trying to promote cultural exchanges in the field of drama, music, dance, etc. Let's take a look at how the stocks performed today after this break. Welcome back to the show. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 8.27 points to close at 6,439.34, and the S&P SL20 dropped 0.98 points to close at 3,746.18. Turnover was 491 million rupees, and 8.29 million shares were traded. And now let's take a look at the day's foreign exchange rates.
that's all the news we have for you tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thank you for watching. Good night.